Hi everyone and welcome to this full length paint along demo in Soft Pastel. I've done a few others just like this where you can work right along with me and on different subject matters because today I'm going to tackle a people portrait. And I'm going to take you right from my initial line sketches through to what the focus of this demo will be really uh, all about the colour and how to go about building up a 3D realistic portrait. So if you enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do check out all my other free content here and then consider having a look at my Patreon channel where you'll find lots more full tutorials. The first thing that I did was get myself a good photo reference to work from. And I'm going to put the photo reference up here so that you can pause this, use it to sketch from, trace from, whatever you like to get your line drawing done. A lot of the time I am working from photo reference for my commissioned work. I do love to sketch from life, but I don't often get the chance to with a lot of my commissioned work. So that's what I'm going to look at today, how to create a realistic 3D portrait from a photograph. So I know the sitter quite well, which helps me a lot. I have the advantage in this one. And I started off with a little freehand sketch using the photograph. and. Then I also made myself a gridded version because my little freehand sketch was smaller than I wanted to work and I thought I would do up a grid to the size of the paper. But in the end I actually preferred the sketch that I did first. I think I got his likeness better in this one. So it just goes to prove that the grid isn't always the best method either. Sometimes your eye picks up on little things um, while you're not focusing so much on the grid itself. So this sometimes happens, sometimes I'll use my gridded version if I'm working on a much bigger commission with several subjects and I want to be absolutely sure that everyone is in scale. But sometimes the freehand sketch seems to have a nicer feel to it. But I wanted to show you very briefly how I go about creating a freehand sketch. I don't use any particular method, perhaps a mixture of a few of them. But I start with larger shapes, so a full oval shape just to describe the shape, the width and the length of the face. Then I'm using these center lines really to describe the tilt and the angle of the head. So these lines are key to lots of the features being in the right places later on. So this part's really important. Once I've got that, I start coming in with very loose and straight lines, very few curves at this stage. I try to describe everything with very loose straight lines. I use my center lines to line up things like the eyes, the corners of the eyes on each side of the nose, and also finding the center point on the lips and the chin. So those early couple of structural lines help me a lot throughout the sketch. Once I've got the straight line section done, I start coming in and curving some more of the lines, making a little bit more detail as I go. But it starts off very uh, simplified and from block shapes only. So let's make a start on the colour work. Please bear in mind also while you're watching this that you're seeing my image from a slight angle. So my proportions here might look a little bit skewed to you. I'll try and show you a head on view of the finished piece towards the end. The first thing I'm picking up is just a little bit of background colour. Quite often when I'm creating a painting, I'll work on the background first. I'm not too concerned with the background of this piece, but I would like to get some of the nice dark contrast especially on this side of his face. So I'm just going to very quickly give him a bit of a darker outline using that background colour. And this is one of my dark Terry Ludwigs. It's a really nice deep um, sort of navy grey. And I'm literally just using that to pick out the far side of his face. I'm not going to bother too much with the rest of the background at the minute. And I'll maybe think about more background 
surrounding him as I progress but for now I just wanted to get where his face meets the background blocked in. But the first thing that I'm going to jump right into is trying to pick out some of the skin tones. And like with everything else, I'm usually working from dark to light. So first task really is to come into some of the areas on the portrait where I can see the darkest colours within the skin tone. So I'm going to try and be loose with this. I really like working up a portrait to a high level of detail, but for today's demo, I'm going to try and speed things up. Try and keep this to around two hours so that it gives you something nice and quick to have a go at. You can work along with me. So initially just picking out the shadow side of the face, trying to look at everything as blocks of colour. Now that I've spent some time on the sketch and I'm reasonably confident with most of my proportions, I can really start looking at everything in terms of blocks of colour. And I'm not leaning very heavily with my unison soft pastel. No need to lean very heavily. Pigment comes off these soft sticks really easily onto most papers. So I can be light handed for the first while. Build up my colours very gradually. It also means that I can make more adjustments to my proportions should I need to. And this first stage of a portrait for me is all about trying to add some colour as well as picking out some of the tonal values in this lower layer. It's all about adding some splashes of colour that will hopefully later on shine through the next layers of pastel. So I'm always looking for any colours I can see shining out from the skin tones. And sometimes those colours may surprise you what you can see in there. I'm going to be using bits of green, purple, blue, Perhaps colours that you wouldn't normally expect to see on a face. So just using big broad marks at the moment. So I don't have to be precise with where I aim my pastel at the moment. Really just bringing in some little bits of colour.
and looking for the main shapes of the face, so the main planes of the face. And of course this face has got a few lines on it which are always tricky to achieve. Hopefully I can show you some tips for creating realistic wrinkles. I always find that I enjoy painting faces that have a bit more age because there's more to grasp, there's more lines, more of a story to tell. I always find it much more difficult to paint someone who's really young and fresh. So the trick with pastel really is to get a few layers on the paper before things start to blend and mix nicely. So I really don't have to be too particular with these first layers of pastel. And the main thing that I'm trying to do with the wrinkles, even at this early stage, is to just drop some pigment, some deeper pigment into that area. Of course it won't remain such a, a thick line like this. I try to use my highlight colours afterwards to add some shape and to narrow this wrinkle line down and make it more natural. But I need to get the dark colours in there first and then I'll work my lighter colours around that. So behind the areas that are going to have facial hair over it, of course we can still see skin through the facial hair so I just need to continue my skin tones into these areas for the time being. Later on then I can bring all of the smaller hairs and marks over this area. The eyebrows, anywhere that you can see skin tones through the hair, don't forget to block those in also.
And of course these lines do look quite harsh when I first add them in. But at this stage it's really just about getting the nice dark contrast in. My highlight stages are going to make sense of it all hopefully. And I always start with the skin tones first on the face. Some people like to start with eyes, with individual features, but to me, to accurately place the eyes and work on that feature, I really need to have the surrounding areas worked first, get a real sense that I've got the eye sockets well placed. And only then do I really feel happy to come in and work on individual features. So this stage takes me a while first. I really work on the skin tones, the overall form of the face, trying to bring the 3D element out before ever thinking of individual features like the eyes. So everything being put on with an extremely light touch. You can see that the layers I apply are pretty transparent. You can see the layer underneath as I'm rubbing the pigment on the paper. So I'm never applying it really thickly, especially for people portraits. I tend to feel my way into these portraits a lot more than with my other work. So the lighting in this photograph is one of the reasons that I chose to paint it because I really love trying to capture the side lit effect so where you've got light coming from one direction within the painting and I really like the contrast that creates. Just using a little bit of pastel pencil to firm up this side of the face. And sometimes just having an area of darkness like this in helps me see all of the colour values better on the face. Just gives me a point of reference for where the darkest values are. And I'm also going to use some pastel pencil just to start and shape the end of the nose here.
and just to find this far nostril again which has disappeared into my lower layers so you can see how nicely the pastel pencil just starts to help me define things and the nose in particular is just such a particular angle when you're working on a three-quarter angle portrait like this your nose really is an important center point on the face So even though I've sketched this out quite precisely beforehand, there are always little things that I spot in the painting process. That's why I like to do the sketch first because it allows me to sit and study the face for a while. Then I have the opportunity to transfer it onto my paper and in this stage I can spot any further mistakes. And then even come this stage of the painting process I'm still spotting little areas that I can improve the proportions on um, but it also gives me an opportunity to check all of my other proportions too so for example just when sketching out making sure that the curve of this line as it comes down continues on around this curve of the eye so using every line on the face to match up with some other part of the face it's why I like painting faces that have a little bit more age because well there are more lines to check against painting someone who's really young and fresh can be a challenge because there's not a lot of uh, instruction on their face it's um, so fresh it's got very few road marks on it And I think even at this stage I'm deciding that I've placed the ear a little bit too high in the composition on the face so I am going to move the ear down just a little and pastel is so great that you can still make pretty major adjustments even when you've started your painting as long as you're using a good pastel paper that accepts multiple layers of pastel then you're going to be able to keep working and make adjustments just like you can with oil paints it's a very similar medium to oil painting and of course there are lots of ways to build up a portrait some people especially in oil paints like to come straight in with the brushes and the blocks of color I'm still a little bit more comfortable working from uh, my line sketch. But I highly recommend having a look at lots of different methods and seeing which one works best for you. But I hope that this video will at least give you a bit of the basics on how I start with the colour, regardless of how you get your your sketch or however you want to start onto your paper. So I'm just giving some darkness to the hairline because it helps me see how bright I need to go with my skin tones.
And a bit like on the other side of the face, just using a little bit of my darker background colour over here to shape this side of the face. Already that helps just get the the main part of the face to stand out from the background. Getting those dark colors in there early really helps me see how bright I eventually need to go with my highlight colors. Color is so relative it really depends where you're looking at a color as to what it will appear to your eyes. So you can take the same color and just by placing it in a different setting it can look entirely different. So it's definitely one of the trickiest things about colour. But it's also one of the joys of colour when, when you figure out how to harness some of that. And although I work from photographs, I do like to break away from the colours that I can see in the photograph a little bit. And try to inject a bit more exciting colour in my work. So colour really is something that you can play with once you get to grips with it. And that's something that I talk about all the time on my Patreon channel. A lot of my videos are very much based at teaching you more about colour. It was definitely one of my own tripping up points when I was learning how to paint. And I feel that the more I learn about colour, it's definitely been one of the most beneficial things that I've put time and effort into learning more about. So if I can recommend one thing to really delve into as an artist, it's uh, your colour theory. And especially with pastel. Whilst you don't have to mix paint colours with pastel, you do have to be able to pick out the right colour or in some cases the right combination of colours that look like the right colour when you mix them on the paper. So there's a certain amount of mixing done with pastel as well, especially in my case with skin tones because I like to apply the layers thinly and that way a bit like real skin as you look at it you get a sense of different colors shining through a bit like the actual translucent effect of our skin. So still just sticking with the mid-tones, not wanting to come in with any bright colours just yet. And it's almost like adding little washes of colour 
over the skin. Really barely touching the paper. And I'm not too concerned if the colours in some places that I apply look a little bit too bright as I know that my highlight colours will calm everything down in the next stages. So it's about trying to be a little bit more bold with this stage, get a bit more colour into the skin. So always a lot of warmth around eyes. You can find both warm and cool colours in, in around the eyes. You can see it I've dotted a little bit of lilac in around just the, around the bottom rim of the eyes. But not worrying about any detail yet. Just trying to look for small areas of colour that I can drop in.
So this side of the face really is dark. And the moustache also casts quite a lot of shadow in here too. So just really darkening underneath the nose down. And it's also going to help the end of the nose really stand out. So this is where I like to come in with a little bit of pastel pencil sometimes. Just really strengthening the darkest areas and shaping important prominent features. So at this stage I'll start to try and bring out a few of the highlights and start to balance the picture a little bit more. I'm happy that I've got a good few vibrant colours and some of my darker values in. And it's really when you start to bring the highlights in that you begin to get a sense of the 3D shape. But I really go gently with this part of the stage, bringing the highlight colours up ever so gradually so that you don't come in too bright and by using highlight colours that are a bit too bright initially you can really flatten your whole image. So again I'm doing it in stages, just feeling my way into the piece, looking for the main blocks and shapes. Just looking for where the light's catching down the cheekbone, onto the cheek, and looking at how this line of the cheek meets both areas. So it's a harsher line on one side of the line, whereas it really blends or gradiates into the colour on the other side of the line. So your edges in every subject matter are really important. How one colour meets another. That's how you start to change your work from the line sketch into the finished painting. You're just replacing your lines with the borders between certain colours.
just looking at the overall shape that some of the areas of highlight make. How it curves down the nose really describes the shape of the nose. And this is quite a, a warm lighter tint that I'm using but I also want to make use of some cooler colors within the skin so some blues and very light lilac shades for highlights As soon as I start to add this colour I can get a sense of the, the strip of cool light that's just catching this part of his face. So some of the highlights seem a bit cooler than others and I think that's because the photograph was taken next to a window so we've got the, the blue of the sky outside reflecting a little bit off certain parts of his skin. So really just focusing on the overall shapes. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle really just fitting all the pieces together. As you block in bit by bit you should join everything up and if you've managed to get a good initial sketch down you should find that everything fits together quite nicely when you start to block in the colours. So that's one of the reasons that I like to do my preparatory sketches first because when it comes to this part then a lot of the time I can just relax into the colour work. I don't have to continually question my proportions, struggle with having to move things. 
I like to get to the painting stage knowing that I can pretty much just enjoy the colour work. So like always with the bigger pastel sticks, I don't have to be 100% accurate in getting my marks on exactly where I want them. Because I can still come in with some pastel pencil, a bit like having a smaller paintbrush, just to come in and really shape things into place. So people often ask about how you get the smaller detail with the bigger sticks and the answer is really by using smaller shards of the pastels, breaking them to get sharp edges, but the real truth is you don't even have to get the tiniest of detail with them. You can still move the pigment around a lot when you get it onto the paper so I'm really just aiming the pastel as best I can and then moving the pigment where I want it once I've got it on the paper. So I've just taken a step or two away from the piece and had a look from a bit of distance and I do this often especially when I'm working on people portraits as it gives you a different perspective. If you sit with your face up close to the piece for a long time you're going to find it difficult after a while to see what uh, adjustments you need to make. So I always recommend getting some distance from your piece, walk past it from a different angle, uh, have a look at it in a mirror, take a photograph of it on your phone and have a look at it on a different scale. All of these things help a lot to just to point out what's wrong. And that's what I've just done, had a quick look and already from a distance you start to get a feel of the form of the face even though I've not done a huge amount to the skin tones really but bringing in some of these highlights and the highlight down the nose really does a lot to bring out the 3D element already. But one thing I did notice is that the shadow down this side of the nose is much darker. I'm just starting to bring some of that shadow out a little further and I'm really going to focus in on this area for the next while and work on the nose and in a few moments on the eyes. So I'm just making use of the pastel pencils here for the smaller details. But I still do like to come in with my soft pastels when I want to add a little blast of colour. And again, I'm not leaning heavily, I'm just uh, very gently adding the pigment to the paper, just trying to catch a little bit of cool shadow on the other side of the nose. and also sticking with brown and making use of the brown pastel pencil there but then also trying to come in with some other colours like uh, some of the deeper purples just trying to keep my colour choices nice and lively so if you're working along try to play with what colours you pick up Maybe you can pick up a colour you wouldn't normally think of picking up for skin tones. But colour can really surprise you and it's fun to experiment with. So 
So really looking at all of my edges, like I mentioned earlier, they're so important where light meets dark. And that's what I'm really looking for now. And I can go back over things with this uh, paper turtle on. Mine is extremely dirty. It's been used a lot. But it's really just a rolled up paper with points on the end. And mine's quite blunt at this stage, but I still like that as a tool. I don't want to scrape an exact line in it. I'm literally just looking to gently shape the pigment into place where I want it. I can also remove little bits of highlight colour, scrape away and reveal some darker colour. So this is a great tool for skin tones because I can blend uh, very subtly in certain areas but accentuate certain lines where I want them as well as you can see here. And I sort of feel like it's a bit of a cheat sometimes when I paint someone with a moustache and a beard because the mouth area, um, this top lip is often so tricky. So I really feel like it's a bit of a cheat getting to cover it over with a moustache. But I've got a tight time limit today. I'm going to try and fit this into as close to two hours as possible. So keeping that in mind, I think it's good to be able to uh, hopefully create the mouth area in quite a short time and I'll I'll show you that after because I'm, I'm going to now focus in a little bit more on the eyes and hopefully get this top area worked a little bit better but we'll focus in on the eyes and the nose area now. So the angle of these eyes is particularly important as I showed briefly earlier in the sketching stage. Um, lining up the corners, the inside corners of the eyes is really important. I always start with those two points and then I try to look at the the tilt or the angle of the eye from there and place the outer point for each eye. And that's still how I'm thinking of this even though I've got my outline in there. I want to pay particular attention to the photo reference as I do this. And I'm just using the pastel pencil initially to re-strengthen my outline. Have a look at those proportions again. Looking at the angle and tilt of each little section of the outline of the eye. Where it changes direction and curves differently. And looking at this strip of eyelid here, the shape that it makes as well. Just measuring everything off each other. And I'm just using the brown, not leaning too heavily, just to get a little sense of some of the darker lines around the eyes. You don't want to come in too heavy handed with this, you don't want eyes to look uh, like everyone's wearing eyeliner. So you want to be careful to not lean too heavily, not go too dark on the outlines of everything. And of course this eye is the one that's in shadow and I'm starting over here so that I'm not leaning on this eye while I work on this one. It doesn't really bother me which eye I start with, but quite often it's the one on the left, just so that I'm not leaning on anything important. So just firming up the shape of the outline of the eye. really is quite dark in this corner on this side. 
and I'll also at this stage just firm up an outline for the iris itself. Just very lightly putting that in with a green pastel pencil. So one of the main areas that um, let a lot of portraits down are on the eyeballs, I find. And it's the white parts of the eyes. So we're starting furthest away from the light. This is the darkest corner of eye over here. And if you look, if you really look at the whites in someone's eyes, I'm going to put some of that same colour in on the other side. But really study the white eyeballs on the next people that you meet. Are they truly white? If I look at this photo reference and try to find where some of the, the brightest white areas are, it will possibly be some of the smaller highlights that we're going to see later on the eyeball. But if I make the white of the eye as bright as those highlights, then they're really not going to stand out. So I'm using uh, blue violets, greys, anything but white really, initially anyway. And I'll just work the other part of the eyeball over here while I, I do the one on the left. Just to show how the colour changes across that. So on this side the eyeball really doesn't go much brighter than this um, BV7, a very icy cool tint. And don't forget that our light source is coming in from this side, so darkest over here, catching a little bit of light. Because of the curve of the eyeball, you're again going to get shadow colours in here. And then this part over here will be the brightest area on any of the white parts of the eyes. So a little later when I'm working on this eye, this part will come up brighter. But just take care with your eyeballs, really. Have a good look at the photo reference. Are they truly bright white? Because sometimes if you make them too bright, it can look really off-putting in the portrait. No one's eyes are really that bright, depending on the light that you're looking at them in. But on the whole, because of the way eyes are set back into our eye sockets, it's more likely that they're going to have some shadows cast on them. Just having a look at some of the darker shadows around this eye. And then let's start to add in some greens for the eye colour on this side. Again, I don't have to be really precise with this when I come in with the bigger pastels. I can really shape that into place once I have it on the paper.
So now I can come in and lighten this side of this eyeball ever so slightly. Clean up around the edge of the iris. But still trying to leave this part of the eyeball pretty dull. So I'm just going to work this eye up to a similar level as this one and just double check that everything looks okay before I start to add more detail and any of the highlights. So just darkening in right at the crease of the eyelid there. And those colours that I blocked in earlier really start to pop out when you start to add a bit of definition to everything. I'm trying to avoid using too much black around the eyes. Again, you can create a, a weird mascara effect. I'm also not even making too solid a line along here. Otherwise, I am going to make him look like he's wearing eyeliner. So, sometimes different things required for different genders because if you're painting someone who's actually wearing eyeliner, then, then you do want to accentuate that, perhaps. But in this case, I'm trying to not make him look like he's wearing eyeliner. And sometimes my big fat pastels are just a little bit too big to get a little dot of colour in somewhere. And I'm just going to take this lovely magenta and dot a little bit of that in there using my paper tautalon. So you can actually draw with this thing as well. You can scrape a little bit of pigment off the stick. If I were using pastel mat, I might use some of my pan pastel applicators for this job, but they don't, the sponge applicators don't work quite so well on velour. But I've been using those little paper turtle wands for many years, doing this very same thing, and they work great. So I'll just try and aim a little blob of pink in here. Just testing it lightly first, seeing if I've got the right place and then leaning a little bit heavier on the next go. So just really looking at the overlap on the corner of the eye here. So not using the darker brown to outline much of this eye. Really trying to think of lighter tones on this side where the light's catching more of the eye. If you can make that distinction between the light and the shadow side, then you're going to really create a, a 3D believable image. We'll just get a little outline on the iris. I'm 
and I'm really still looking at the photo reference at this stage because the placement of these and the placement of the pupil in the centre is really important when you're trying to catch someone's likeness and this one can definitely go askew for me because while I'm filming I'm usually sitting not dead centre to the piece so that you guys get a slightly better view so sometimes it's difficult to really see head on if you've got the proportions just right. And I'll also fill that in with some green. So both sides look pretty similar at the minute. I'm going to start and bring some of the colour up a little more on the brighter parts on this eye. So again, I don't have to lean very heavily. I don't care if I go over my edges slightly. When I come back in with the pastel pencil, all of that will get sorted out. So don't be too concerned about putting it on perfectly first time. And so I'm really deciding to not use any white at all on the white of the eyeballs. Two lighter tints and saving my white for some of the little highlights on the eye. So I'll start to add a little bit more colour to the iris because of course it's not just one shade of green in there. So many different colours and everyone's eyes are so different. But again because of the scale and the time limit on this I'm going to try and be quick about it. So some of my smaller shards of pastel become useful for this. And of course the all-important placement of the pupil. So I keep it small to begin with, although they are quite small. So make it so that you can go a little bit bigger in any direction and just increase it ever so slowly in size, making sure you've got it in the right place. So it's not always dead centre depending on the angle of your photograph. You can see with this one it's actually quite close to the top of the eye 
because we can't see the full circle of the iris. So just be careful what angle your portrait is at. So yeah, I think I need to raise this one ever so slightly. And I can play about with the shape of that so it's not set in stone at this stage. Although there's more that I could do to the colour within the irises, I'm going to quickly add a little bit of my highlight colours on. And for this I'm going to search for some smaller shards of pastel. Get myself some nice sharp edges. And I've got everything in my pastel box from little tiny pieces like this. Where I can find a point somewhere that will make me a good sharp highlight. Of course not all of the highlights in the eye are bright white. I'm going to try and add a little bit of highlight using blue as well. And the reason I don't come in with my pastel pencil right away here is because I want these highlights to be really bright, really uh, show up against the colours underneath. And you can see that that happens with the soft pastel. You get really vibrant highlights. So again, just test a little area, see if I've got it in almost the right place. Trying to find a little edge. And of course it would be much easier if I were sat directly in front of the piece because I would be able to uh, get much closer to where I'm trying to aim the pastel. And it's just a little difficult from one side to do this. Of course then you can come back in and shape them a little bit with your pencils. And this is something that I'll go back and forth a few times until I get it to how I'm happy with it. Of course if you were working on a bigger scale as well, this part becomes easier. It's a little bit fiddly at this size. So just trying to gently shape the highlights into place. And eyes really are a feature that I enjoy working on. I think a lot of artists take a lot of joy in working on the eyes of something. I will have to keep it brief today though because 
I'm very mindful of my time limit on this. I don't want it to turn into a big long video. I'd like these paint along demos to remain short enough that you can commit this amount of time to having a bit of practice. So I purposefully didn't add a solid line across the top of his eyes, on this side anyway. And I'm just going to use pastel pencil brown colour because we're sort of looking down on him we're looking down on his eyelashes which gives a nice effect and just ever so lightly bringing those sweeping around the eye following the line of the eye but try not to create a solid line so that you can still see where each uh, eyelash sprouts out of. Of course be careful that your eyelashes don't come out from around the edge of the eyeball itself. Remember you've got this thin rim around the bottom of the eyes and it's just from the edge of that that you've got to bring your eyelashes from. And I don't want them again to stand out too much so I'm just blending them in. And I'll do the same on the other side. I think because we're in the darkness over here I'm going to use a little bit of black just for some of the smallest ones as they go into the shadows. Again, a little hint at some of the eyelashes on the side, on the bottom rim. So it's probably as much time as I have to go into detail on the eyes. If I've got time at the end, maybe I'll see some further adjustments. But I'll have a quick look at the nose area and then try and work on with some of the, the facial hair. What I should actually do now is just quickly block in this eyebrow so that the, the eyes start to look a little bit more normal. Sometimes you do a job, half of it, and uh, you forget all about the rest of it. But it'll be good to get this eyebrow blocked in, I think. So with the eyebrow, again, it's quite sparse hair, so I don't want to just colour them in solid, I'm trying to find some of the more solid parts but also leave some of my skin tone shining through. So just a little hint of it with my dark 5, really dark brown that I've used on the hairline already. Just looking at the direction of the hairs. Eyebrows can do really strange things so just be careful to look at where the hairs are sprouting from and the direction that they're going. Still trying to leave some gaps so that my skin tones shine through.
So just getting lighter and lighter with the pencil, trying to uh, get some of those little hairs that eventually just disappear up into the brow. And that already looks a good bit better. I'll come back and work a little bit more at that when I'm working on the rest of the facial hair. Just looking at some of the shapes on this side of the nose, thinking that uh, some of those planes that I made really obvious in the early stages, I can start to tone things down a little bit so that it becomes a bit more subtle. So I'll have a quick look at this ear over here. I've moved this ear so many times when I was drawing this out. It's one of the reasons that I don't film my whole sketching process because I do make a lot of mistakes. I rub out, I fix things, I correct and move things. So it's, it's a bit of a slow process sometimes. And then other days you just really get someone's likeness right away. This one went reasonably fast, but I had uh, the jawline a little bit too wide initially and the ear a little bit too high. So throughout my sketching process, I have slowly but surely adjusted these, hopefully into a better place. Doesn't matter too much for the purposes of this demo, uh, as that's all it is. But if you're really working on a portrait, trying to get the likeness of someone, then all of those things are pretty important. Really every feature on this you could spend hours if you're going to go into high level of um, photorealism. That's not what I'm aiming for here at all. I'm trying to look at each feature and get it down with less marks than it would take for photorealism but using my colour values hopefully you can still bring about quite a realistic effect at the end. So a lot of my commission pieces, I take them further into more detail. But a lot of the time I really like uh, just working a bit more loosely, trying to capture something with less marks. So just looking for the main ridges within the ear, any little places that they're catching some light that I can accentuate a little.
and then either with a bit of pastel pencil or sometimes just with the the paper turtle on I'll come back in and accentuate a bit of that I can scrape away some of the lighter colors and reveal some darker lines again But the ear is partially concealed as well with some of the hair that's coming around from the face. I really don't know how much I'm going to get done on the hair as it's quite complicated. I may just get it blocked in for this tutorial and then take some time to finish it off properly and make another video showing just the hair. That may be the case. I may have bitten off more than I can chew. So I'm going to focus in on this area now, the chin, try and get the moustache blocked in and the, the lip, really we can only see the lower lip here. Get a bit of that nice deep red pigment in there. As I said earlier, the moustache cuts out a lot of the problems associated with painting mouths, lips. You really don't have the corners of the mouth to worry about. So many normally tricky areas that you don't have to deal with because of the wonderful coverage of the moustache. So it's partly why I chose this today because it's useful to show you some facial hair and how I tackle that, but it also helps me speed up a little. Perhaps I'll come back and do uh, the next portrait demo that I do. I'll make it all about a mouth. Perhaps there'll even be dreaded teeth. But for this one, it has kept it a little more simple for me. So it's pretty similar to how I would um, paint fur on an animal. Just blocking in any little bits of dark that I can see. Starting to think about the direction of the hairs. It's particularly dark over this side of course but there are some nice warm tones shining out through the hair as well. And then just leaving that gap for the lip. Of course I will work on the edges uh, with some pastel pencil probably as well. But I just want to get um, blocked in at this stage. And because the beard is a little bit more thick in this area I've uh, not really bothered to put too much of the skin tone in behind it. So really just blocking it in. Of 
course towards the edges you can see through it so be careful not to make it too solid So uh, I may have just lost a little bit of footage there from the moustache. Uh, sometimes files get corrupted and I heard something going wrong with the camera and luckily I stopped working. So I'm just going to recap what I was doing there, coming back in with the darker pencil and with my brown pencil on the other side just softening how the hairs start to meet the the moustache and get a little longer. So just working on the edge around the moustache. And then coming in with some of this lighter orange tone, just uh, using an edge of that to catch where the light is hitting the moustache on the other side. And that really helps it stand out against our dark background. Just the odd hair over on that side catching the light. So that's really all we missed there with that footage. I'm bringing some more of this orange tone over onto this lighter side of the moustache. So always remembering that the light source is coming from over here. And even bringing in a few hints of little lighter hairs on this side of the moustache where it might be catching in the light. So with very little you can do quite a lot and I'm, I'm having to think in a very simplified way so that I can get through everything in this demo. So I haven't really done a lot of highlighting on the face so far. I added a few highlights in this main central area which already helped the face start to look more 3D. But before adding any more facial hair I'm just going to bring some more of the lightness down this side of the face increase that contrast between the dark and the lit side of the face. and then just blending that lightly in. So you can see how you can start to build the layers up really gradually with your highlights and yet still be able to see some of the colors that you added at the start. You can leave them as uh, accents on the skin showing a bit of the structure of the face. So really focusing on the cheekbone here in particular but also bringing a little bit more light in under this eye And perhaps if I were going for true photorealism here, I would go into detail on each little line and, and wrinkle along this part. But I'm really trying for simplicity today. And speed, of course. So just using my black pastel pencil bringing some of those hairs out over the ear 
and also starting to think about how they join into the face down the sideburns being really light handed here with the pencil I don't want big dark lines joining into the face even coming in with the brown a little bit just to make some of the hairs a bit lighter as this meets the skin so you want to try and make your hairline pretty soft and natural if possible Again, just trying to make really soft little marks for the finest of hairs around the edges. The hair here is quite sparse in comparison to the beard. So it's important to let lots of the skin shine through here. really not looking at each individual hair but I am trying to take my time so that I don't let the hairs become too uniform Just bringing some of the, the lighter highlight flesh colour into this area which is quite free from hair and catching a little bit of light. Really marks the side of the mouth. And the moustache should just overlap it slightly. Just following the outline of the beard, working on all of the little edges. Really darkening down over on this side of the beard.
and also coming in with some little marks of uh, lighter brown but not wanting to fill this area up too much with too many marks less can definitely be more in this part And if possible, I just want to drag a few lighter hairs out over the dark background on this side. And I'm okay using the pencil for that because I want them to be quite subtle. They really don't show up that great. I'm having to squeeze quite hard with the pencil to make those lines show up. The lighter colours in the pencils certainly don't go on quite as well on the velour as the darker colours do. Which is fine when what you're after is a more subtle mark. So let's just quickly get a bit of uh, the t-shirt, the neckline in so that I can work the rest of the beard, but I just want to get plenty of darkness in behind the beard so that it will really stand out. So I'm not entirely sure how much of the neckline I'll bother doing. I think just enough to make the beard stand out. I'm going to go a bit darker just behind here. But really keep everything very dark on this side. I really like the work of Caravaggio and how he could make figures really loom out of the darkness. So yeah, I probably won't bother working much more of the background than this. May just add a little bit of lightness creeping in from this side. Just a few bits of highlight on the neck. Mm -hmm. 
And anytime that I'm trying to create one of those little creases in the skin, I'm really using my highlight color and trying to leave a little bit of the darker color underneath showing through. So rather than drawing the dark lines on, it's more about trying to leave the gap to show some of my darker color. So just trying to get the neck to some level of uh, finished so that I can work on the beard which should come down over the top of that. This area in here in the neck really is very dark. So now I'm trying to pick out some of the, the darker marks through the beard. Of course that's going to be a lot of the darkness over on this side in the shadows. But you can also see a lot of the lighter hairs that are really standing out in the darkness over there. Just trying to get a bit more shape to the beard now with my darker colours and then I'll bring some highlight colours in over the top. And I'm very time conscious with this demo. I've probably got about 15-20 minutes left on the clock and I'd like to do some more work on the skin tones, especially on the forehead, tackle some of those wrinkles. And as I said at the start, I may have to just quickly block in the hair and perhaps I'll make another video just for the hair at a later stage. So just noticing how the beard changes colour in certain areas, bits of extra warmth in certain areas.
And of course for those lighter highlight hairs on the beard to show up, got to make sure that there's a good bit of contrast around them so just really adding a lot of dark black over on this side of the beard especially. Then similarly to the moustache, bring some lighter marks down through the beard. And there's also quite a lot of nice grey marks coming through and I'm using one of my BV7 shards with nice sharp edges on it. That very pale icy blue. I'm just trying to turn the pastel every now and then to find another edge that I can make a small sharp line with. Normally I like to work a little bit bigger than this for most of my face portraits. It certainly makes it easier the bigger you go in terms of getting the detail. So if you want to achieve really fine detail and you're finding that difficult at the moment, maybe something that you need to do is increase the scale of your work. You're going to give yourself a lot more space especially if you're just starting out with soft pastel as it can be quite a, a blunt instrument and if you're constantly trying to get the sharper edges to make smaller and smaller marks then you're going to make life a little difficult. So consider trying a, a bigger painting. But I purposefully do my demos nice and small so that I keep it quick. I try not to stray over the two hours too much. I like to be able to show you what you can do with soft pastel that doesn't require lots and lots of hours. It's such a wonderful medium. You can create a lot in a short time with it. So I could spend a lot longer on the beard, but I hope that you get the idea and you see how that starts to take shape. Again, it's one of those areas, if I have time at the end, I'll come back and do a little more, but that's the basic principle of it. Adding maybe just a few brighter highlights over on this side because of how the light catches here more. But let's try and have a bit more of a look at the forehead add some of the extra lines across the forehead. So I haven't really done very much to this area. I just blocked in roughly at the start. And 
now I'm just going to darken down some areas to create just a hint at some of the lines. I'm not worried about getting absolutely every one. He might even thank me if I leave a few of them out. I'm just really looking at the shape of the forehead here. It's perhaps a little more bulged in the middle. All little adjustments you can do as you go. Just noticing the angle that those lines come out at. And I'm using really dark colour for it for the lines that are coming out from the shadows over on the left side of the face. But then as I come into the centre of the forehead, picking up slightly lighter tones. So I'm not being too fussy about how I put these in as I'm going to use my lighter colours. And they shouldn't look so prominent once I'm finished. I tend to try and avoid using too much pastel pencil when it comes to wrinkles because you can really leave them looking quite liney. It's best to try and do most of it with the soft pastel. But just darkening over on the shadow side there a little bit more.
So with this initial layer of uh, highlight color, just trying to map in all of the lines, more or less leaving the gaps for my darker colors underneath. And then I can soften it or accentuate certain parts with stronger highlight colors. So now I can come in with a slightly stronger highlight, just looking for where the light's really catching each little section. And how the light is really just trying to shine up the brow in this direction, catching certain areas of the forehead as it leans towards the light.
So if I feel that I want to strengthen any of those lines a little bit, I can come in with one of my paper tortillons. Can drag the line a little bit where I feel it's required. But as I said, I don't want them to be too pronounced. Only really need a hint of them for the effect. So the forehead still looks a little bit lumpy and bumpy, uh, but this is a slow process. Normally I would spend a long time on areas like this. Today hopefully I can just give you a quick look, a bit of an overview, and you'll get the idea. Back in now just to strengthen up this eyebrow a little. like around the edges of the beard start to bring some of the finer hairs into the flesh area. I 
eyebrows really give a person a lot of their expression so they're worth spending some time on. I mean, yeah, you really could spend a long time working on these wrinkles, just making them stand out a bit less, making them a bit more subtle, working on the spaces in between the wrinkles. The main thing to look for really is where the dark line is and where there's any little bit of highlight catching on either side of the line. Try and get a little hint of that in and sometimes that's enough. So I'm just trying to make them a little less thick looking, make the lines a little more delicate. So the hair is probably the next thing on the agenda and I'll try and very loosely block some of it in. And I think because it's quite an interesting head of hair, good and messy, some curls, 
nice light heavy knit. I think I should come back and do a more detailed video for the hair. And I hadn't really sketched in the curls or done anything with this part. So maybe I should give this a bit more focus and make another video. So I'm going to wrap this up quite soon and I will make another video for the hair. Just trying to keep my videos a more comfortable length to upload so I don't want it getting out of hand. So just very quickly and roughly doing a little bit of blocking in. Haven't really studied the hair too much yet. But I promise that I'll continue with this area and come back with another video just for the hair very soon.